everybody. I'd like to look at a paper today that's a couple years old now, but I'd like to use it as kind of a launching pad, as an example problem, if you will, with uh, some of the issues that I see with uh, maybe not the greatest science being done, and as well uh, some uh, microarray uh, science that, in fact, isn't done very well. And the way that this uh, experiment was set up is they had what they termed 16 healthy uh, subjects, and then other patients with uh, various uh, neurologic disorder, uh, including Down syndrome, and that's the one that's going to be focused on mainly uh, toward the real data portion. But what they did is basically took 10 to 15 mils of blood from each one of their uh, patients and cracked open the cells using uh, a commercial reagent, an organic reagent called Trizol, did a total RNA extraction, to take, take the uh, RNA and uh, perform uh, reverse uh, transcription, it's three prime biased, and then uh, uh, transcribe off of that, and do the uh, make the probes, and uh, lay it down in Affymetrix chips. Analyze the data using uh, GeneSpring software, and uh, set up some sort of a uh, uh, statistical rigor to kind of weed out some of their genes. And they're I don't know whether they're intentionally vague or maybe they just forgot to put stuff in there, but nevertheless, it's vague. Uh, you know what I'll. I'll Cut them a little bit of slack. I mean, it's almost two years old. It's about two years old. But uh, let's get right into some data here. They w took a look at uh, what they term uh, TSC2 patients. And they had, say, seven uh, TSC2 patients with autism, and it looks like uh, eight uh, patients uh, without. Actually, they, had, they started off with three and then had eight, and their statistics weren't uh, very, you know, weren't good enough to actually get any uh, really meaningful data out, so they added an additional seven uh, TSC2 patients, four with autism and three without. So they had a total of uh, seven actually with autism and 11 without autism. And they were able to get some statistics out, uh, show some genes that uh, they feel are uh, differentially expressed in the blood, total blood of uh, uh, like plus and minus autism in, uh, in the, in the uh, TST, uh, TSC2 uh, sample. What you see here are, is a gene list in graphical format. And Red being highly expressed and uh, green being uh, uh, down-regulated. The control samples, the what they term healthy uh, samples on the left, and then uh, Down syndrome, TSC, and TF on the uh, right-hand side for a couple of other different neurologic disorders. And what would really be nice is if you had like a huge block of red and then a huge block of yellow and a huge block of green, you could say, ah, if it's red right here, that's going to be healthy. And if it's green right there, that's going to be uh, Down syndrome. And if it's you know green, yellow right there, it's going to be uh, uh, TF or TSC. In other words, you you want something that you can that's going to jump out at you. And really, nothing really does here. I mean, it's the software is strong enough, the statistics are strong enough in order for it to uh, pull out and categorize these well enough. But honestly, nothing's really jumping out. What is jumping out? What was really interesting is that. Uh, uh, genes off of chromosome 21 are massively uh, uh, dysregulated, what they term dysregulated. And what they've basically done is taken a look at uh, all the genes uh, that, are, that are dysregulated and just categorize them. And it happens that you know, chromosome 21 uh, comes off. But this is for Down syndrome, Down syndrome only. And as you can see here on this whisker plot, uh, might also be known as box plot, whatever circles, you can see Down syndrome in the second column, really. Uh, that's that's uh, much different than the others, where you have your uh, what they term health again healthy controls and the uh, uh, NF and the uh, TSC2, and they just, and they they pull out some genes here, but I have some problems, you know, with this analysis, and the problem is, um, well, they took all of the blood, and there's many different types of blood cells in there. Uh, what would have been interesting is being able to kind of parse this out and being able to say, ah, the the difference that we're seeing in uh, in uh, Down syndrome uh, cases, are involved, you know, with this type of cell, um, you know, and then again, you know, what about male to female? There's no, there's, you know, all that's lost on their analysis here. They didn't uh, take into account age. Um, you know, there's, there's real big, there's problems with this, and and this is what I want to kind of draw attention to, uh, well, just because someone says that, you know, these 17 or these 1,000 genes are different in in these type of people. Uh, well then, you, you, you really have to look at the details. For example here, they kind of play around with their statistics. Here they have a p-value of 0 0.05, and there's no uh, 
multiple uh, testing uh, correction uh, going on. Whereas in, in other figures in the exact same paper, they uh, report p-values of 0 0.01 with there being actually a, a like false discovery rate uh, algorithm engaged. That's, you know, having that uh, you know, applied in one figure and not applied in another really smacks of kind of junky data. And I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. You're going to have to uh, set a standard and be able to uh, meet that standard for all of your data, not just, you know, pick and choose here and there, dibble-dabble. That, that that's that's not good science, and that's unfortunate because this you know, you know at the outset I was really kind of excited. This is kind of interesting, but I just don't think that it uh, passes muster. To be perfectly honest with you, and again I have you know several problems uh, with the paper. I'll go ahead and just list these out right here right now. Problem number one: there's no validation. They don't go back and do uh, real-time PCR, quantitative PCR on this, and there is a low sample number. Um, you know, it's good enough for some statistics, but not good enough, for, uh, in my opinion, for others. And there's inconsistency, there's multiple cell types, and there's scatter. So that really reduces the predictive value. And they follow this uh, particular paper up with another 2005 paper. But as you can see here, look at these colors. Look how it changes all the way across here. That is problematic. And it's problematic because the only thing that you really want to do uh, with, these, uh, with this type of experiment is develop some sort of an uh, assessment tool for, uh, that has predictive value. And if you have massive scatter amongst uh, many different types of genes, really then how predictive can that be unless there's a massive amount of genes, a massive number of genes that you can go back and check. Okay, here's my blood. Let me bounce that off of someone, uh, you know, the, the canonical uh, Down syndrome uh, set of genes uh, from blood. So you really can't do that at this point, and that's too bad. Uh, if they had gone uh, the extra steps and gone through validation, increased the sample size, and kind of went through the more uh, statistically rigorous uh, algorithms to actually analyze their data and to make it much more convincing. Well, then they might actually be on the first, have taken the first step into uh, creating a predictive tool uh, utilizing uh, whole blood. If you want it, you want it.